What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna have some fun with the extension Fredo Scale, which is a free extension from Fredo 6 that allows you to scale and bend objects in different ways inside of SketchUp. So this week's extension was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So um, if you wanna vote on my extension that I cover every week and support the show, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, I will link to this free extension in the notes down below. Um, note that when you install Fredo Scale, you also need to install libfredo, which is Fredo's library of scripts that are required in order for his other extensions to work. We may also do some stuff with Curvaloft, so I will link to that in the notes down below as well. But for this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by deleting my default model, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw out a rectangle. And so for this rectangle, we'll make it maybe 20 feet long. Um, it doesn't really matter right now. We'll make it maybe 12 inches wide, and then I'll just tap the R key and draw a rectangle in order to finish this off. And I'm just gonna extrude this up just a little bit like this. And then I'm just going to triple click on it and I'm gonna make this a group. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the radial bending tool in order to bend this in a couple different directions. And this is more just like a fun model than anything else, but you can use the principles in here in order to create a lot of different kinds of things. But what I wanna do in this situation is start by selecting radial bending. And then you can see how that gives me this little uh, protractor in here that's gonna allow me to set a point. And so I'm gonna start by setting a point on my corner right here and make sure that this is straight up and down so that you're bending along the proper axis. But what I wanna do is I wanna start by setting my base point. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start by clicking on this midpoint because I wanna bend this between this point and the middle point right here. So I'm just gonna click. It's gonna ask for a target point as well. So I'm just gonna click here again. And then I'm just going to type in negative 90 degrees and hit the enter key. So what that did is that bent this between this point right here and this point right here um, at 90 degrees. And then I wanna do the same thing, but now I wanna bend the other half of this. One thing to note about this, and I didn't even realize this until a little while ago, but when you have this active, if you uh, hit the tab key, there's some slicing parameters in here. We wanna make sure, first of all, that our additional edges are softened and that they're smooth like this. Um, so we wanna make sure these are softened and smooth so you don't get all of this extra stuff in here. Um, we can also hide some of this stuff in a minute so it's not the end of the world. But what we wanna do is we just wanna click on okay. So then what I wanna do is I wanna mouse over this and click on this point and this point. So that's set my reference point. I wanna click here again to set my target point. And then I just wanna move my mouse 90 degrees. So we're just gonna type in 90 degrees and hit the enter key. And so what this has done is this has bent this once 90 degrees this way, once 90 degrees this way. And so what that's gonna allow us to do, and let's go ahead and clean up these edges. So we're gonna use the soften edges tool in order to do that. I'm just gonna check the box for soften coplanar. That'll go through and this will soften all of these edges. So what this has given me is this has given me kind of this rib shape um, that I can now use in order to create another shape. So what I wanna do is I just wanna tap the Q key to activate the rotate tool. We're just gonna rotate this until it's standing up. So we're gonna rotate this like this. Well then, what we can do is A, let's go ahead and let's make this a component. Just for now, we may explode this in a minute, but in case we decide to make a whole bunch of changes or something like that, we're gonna go ahead and make this a component. And we'll just call this something like rib and hit the enter key. Well now, I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy. So just tap the M key, click on this corner, and tap the control key. So what that's done is that's allowed us to make a single copy. Well then, I'm just going to rotate this either using one of these or by scaling it to negative one, however you wanna do that. But I'm just going to rotate this like this. And then I'm gonna move my pieces back together. And so what that's done is that's allowed me to create a pair of ribs right here. Well then, I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode again, and I'm gonna create an array of copies. So I'm just gonna move this, and we'll just type in a value of three feet. So what we're gonna do is tap the M key, click on this point, and tap the control key to enter copy mode, type in a value of three feet. And then we're gonna type in times 
and type in 10 and hit the enter key. So what that did is that created 10 copies right here. And honestly, I don't like this spacing, so I'm gonna do this again. So I'm just going to maybe make this more of like a two foot gap and then type in times 10. Maybe I'll type in times 20 and hit the enter key. So what that's done is that's created a number of different ribs in here. And so from here, this starts getting a little bit weird because these are components, especially if we decide to bend this again. Usually what I like to do when I'm using this tool is I like to move it over and then create a copy. Because at this point, what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start exploding geometry. So I'm going to, for example, take all of these and right click and put them in a group. And then inside of this, I'm gonna do a control A and I'm gonna explode all of these so they become raw geometry. Um, so that's why I create a copy because once you've done this, you don't have that component functionality in here anymore. I wanna keep that in case I decide to make any changes later. Um, so what I wanna do now so there's a few different things we could do with this tool. And again, we're just kind of having fun with what we can create here. And so then one, once we've done this, one fun thing we could do with this is we could actually bend this shape in the same way that we bent this before. This is one reason we exploded this is because this extension is gonna work a lot better on the raw geometry inside of this shape. But for example, what I can do is I'm gonna come in here again and activate Fredo scale. And we're just gonna use radial bending again based on this bottom point. So we're gonna click right here, move our mouse over, and then single click right here like this. And so we're gonna click again to set our target point, and then we can rotate this whole thing. We just type in a value of maybe like 45 degrees or 90 degrees again. So if I type in 90, that's gonna take this and it's gonna bend it along that same 90 degrees that's in here. And depending on the complexity of your model, this may take a little while in order for this to create your shape. So you just probably wanna wait and let it work. So if you look at this, what this has done is this has taken this shape and it's bent it along this curve. Well then, we could create a copy of this, maybe using like the rotate tool or something like that. You could also use the move tool, um, but I could use the rotate tool, tap the Q key in order, and mouse over this corner, and tap the control key, and then I could create a copy that I could align with this edge. And note that you get a little bit of difference here. Um, there's a little bit of deforma deformation between these shapes. So then you could also take this, make a copy of it using the move tool, and then using the scale tool, you could tap the S key and scale it to negative one, and then move this piece back, probably aligning these end pieces like this in order to make this more of a continuous shape. So in addition, you could also come in here and you could skin these using a tool like Curveloft. And so one way that we could do that, and we're gonna go ahead and make another copy of this because we're gonna explode this again. Um, but another way that you could do that, and I've already done this in here, is a lot of the time your edges are going to come in here and they're gonna be all broken up, which makes this a lot harder. Um, but what I did is you can just double click on this face like this and then do a shift click and then there's another extension which I will link to in the notes down below called weld. So you can use weld in order to weld these into complete curves. So I think if I go and look at the other side of this, that the other side, these are all in the little parts and pieces, right? You can see how this got broken up into pieces and so selecting these edges, like the full edge, is really complicated. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double click on this face then hold the shift key to deselect the face itself. And I'm just gonna use the extension weld in order to weld these curves into single curves. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this again so that this double curve becomes a single curve. And then when I select this, I get the whole thing. I'm gonna do the same, and I didn't have to do the whole thing over here. But now what that would allow us to do, and notice how we wanna do this before we explode this because then since these are components, um, the change that we apply to one of them gets applied to all of them. Well then, we take this whole thing and we could explode it like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn on parallel projection mode, look at the front view, and then I'm just gonna drag a little box in here or in order to select all of these edges. And we're probably gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. But then when you select all of these edges like this, you can use the extension Curveloft's loft by spline function. 
And what it can do is it can create a face over all of these edges. So if you look at this, what this is doing is this is using all of these edges in order to create a face that runs along them. And so in this situation, this is coming through and this is creating this as a grid. If you wanted to simplify your geometry, you could turn your, uh, your number of segments in here down to like one. So then it would just create a face that just runs along these. But we could go ahead and we could click off of this. And then I'm just gonna take everything except that face. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna hide it. You can see how you can use this to generate a face as well. And this gets really complex because there's a lot of other things you could do too. You could use more Afredo's extensions to give this thickness or something like that. But if you wanted this to be closed in when you created a shape like this one, you could just generate that skin before you bend it. And then it would be on there um, in order for you to be able to create this more complex shape. So there's a lot of different things you can do with Fredo scale and with the radial bending tool. There's other tools in here as well, which we can talk about in a future video if you're interested. So I guess more of a concepts video than anything else, but it gives you really an idea of the power of Fredo scale, and you can use this to start creating different things inside of your models. And just remember that the more you understand about the settings of the tools, the more you can make them do what you want inside of SketchUp. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video. Um, if you'd like to see more stuff like this, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.